I'm very excited to be talking to you today because I'm introducing our new program of Ossa Mobility Clinics Australia. And this is in the Optimising Outcomes for All Amputees series of webinars. But today I'm going to be introducing you to our mobility clinics, which were started last year, and introducing the new one, which is going to be in Sydney this year. Our first mobility clinic in Australia was held in Brisbane last year in September. And we had amputees attending, we had prosthetists, physiotherapists, uh, an exercise physiologist and amputee families and support people attending the clinic. We had about a 50-50 split between amputee athletes and allied health professionals. Um, the amputee athletes uh, were 52% of attendees, physiotherapists 27% and prosthetists 21% of attendees. So what we actually had was a one-to-one -one ratio of an amputee athlete working with an allied health professional during the two days of the clinics. The age of the amputee athletes was spread um, relatively even, evenly between four years and 72 years. Uh, possibly the only group that was um, less represented was the teen years, but we had a, quite a few juniors. We had 13 juniors from zero to 12 years, and then we had um, a good spread of ages from 19 to 72 years of age. So the age is spread from four to 72, the two, the youngest and the eldest on the left there. Within the group of amputee athletes, we split them into three groups. So we had a junior group, comprising of the paediatric amputees. We had a trainer group, which were the group of amputees who had nil running experience. And we had a group of challenger amputees who had run before or were in possession of a running prosthesis. The clinic was hosted by Professor Robert Gailey, PhD, PT, well-known physiotherapist from the United States, an accomplished researcher in amputee rehabilitation, the biomechanics and metabolic cost of amputee gait, functional assessment and athletic pursuits of the amputee. Bob Gailey is also the developer, developer of the AMP, or the Amputee Mobility Predictor Scale, and the CHAMP, the Amputee Mobility Predictor Scale for higher level or higher functioning amputees. And Bob is also very heavily involved in the Ossa Mobility and Running Clinics in the US. So we had a very good start last year being taken under the wing of Bob and shown how to run the mobility and running clinics. Things we did over the two days were learning to run using the, the Gailey Five Step Method. We had a lot of one-to-one -one activities, and by that I mean there was one amputee athlete attended by one health professional for safety reasons and also to develop the confidence in the amputee athlete as they were challenged by activities that they may not have done before. And you can see there on the right-hand side that all amputee athletes were fitted with a gait belt and uh, had their health professional hanging onto them as they started doing the new activities. We also had numerous presentations during the two days uh, regarding amputee running gait. Uh, we did assessments of individual gaits and filming, which won't be happening this year for a couple of reasons, but we will have other things in their stead that I'll be talking about. We did a lot of mobility activities to improve people's uh, negotiation of obstacles as well to improve their, fun their activities of daily living. And now to introduce our first clinic for 2016. It will be held in Sydney on the 21st and 22nd of April this year at Newington College, a private uh, Sydney boys school located 200 Stanmore Road in Stanmore. We'll have very similar facilities that we had last year in Brisbane in that we'll have an open field to do our running and activities on. 
We'll also have undercover basketball courts to do our mobility um, activities and exercises on and we will also have access to conference rooms for our presentations. The aims of the clinics for our amputee athletes are to maximise the use of their prostheses, to learn to run or move more quickly. A lot of amputees think they need to learn to run when they first start rehabilitation, but in essence what they're really saying to us is that I need to improve my mobility above just a walking function. I need to be able to move quickly and I need to be able to negotiate obstacles. And these are the things that the clinic will be focusing on as well. Another important aim is for the amputee athletes to improve their balance because it's been uh, shown that an improvement in balance will um, coordinate with an improvement in confidence for amputees in their mobility. They will learn to move confidently in all directions. The amputee athletes will learn exercises that they can carry over into their lives as prosthetic users and really use for the rest of their life to maintain and improve their mobility. Another very important aim is for amputees to connect with other amputees who may be at different stages of their lives. For example, we will have paediatric amputees with uh, worried parents with them and they can talk to amputees who are older and through their lives and see how that they've been able to construct a very happy, healthy and productive life for themselves. And uh, in that way they'll be able to guide their children into their adult lives. And all of these activities are in a fun and empowering environment. There's a lot of uh, pluses for the health professionals themselves to attend the clinic as well. They'll be learning techniques to assist their clients to achieve a higher level of functioning so that they may be able to improve their prosthetic componentry in the future and move on with their functioning. They'll be able to gain a greater appreciation of amputees' needs for their higher functioning no matter what the starting point. And they will also have the opportunity to gain experience with running prostheses. I'm going to introduce to you now the offer coaches for the Sydney Clinic. Coming from Brisbane, we have Brett Jones, who is a level five athletics coach with 20 years professional coaching experience. Brett has a great deal of knowledge due to his work with numerous national teams and Paralympians successfully, and he will be lecturing to us on biomechanics and other matters to do with amputee running and higher functioning. We have Don Elgin, very successful uh, multiple Paralympic medalist who medalled in pentathlon and the men's 4x1 and 4x400 metre relays over several uh, Paralympic Games. Don is an excellent motivational speaker and amputee businessman. He's the director and founder of Star Amp Global and he's author of the book One Foot on the Podium and he'll be delivering motivational speak, uh, speeches and also uh, chairing an amputee forum about information and things that are available to assist amputees with their daily living. A new member to our clinic team, <coughs> excuse me, Shalendra Maharaj, who is a senior physiotherapist within the Queensland Paediatric Rehabilitation Service at the Lady Salento Children's Hospital, Brisbane, Australia. Shale has worked with children with limb deficiency for over 10 years and currently coordinates the limb deficiency clinic at the major tertiary hospital, Lady Salento, in Brisbane, Australia. And he's very passionate about children and their families getting back into leisure and recreation in order to leave, lead healthy lifestyles and continue that on, on into adulthood. So we're very happy to welcome Shale to our team. David Howells will also be joining us, a very experienced prosthetist with 40 years experience in the profession. 
David is appointed prosthetist to the Australian Paralympic track and field team and was instrumental in their great success in the Sydney 2000 Paralympic Games. David in fact developed the alignment for transtibial sprinting prosthesis which is now adopted worldwide for all sprinting prosthesis in competition. And I will be leading the clinic this time, uh, Cathy Howells my name. I'm an amputee physiotherapist with over 28 years experience. I've treated amputees from right through to from acute care through rehabilitation and to improving functional level on prosthesis right through to the Paralympic level. I'm the author of The Amputee Coach, empowering you to walk well, be fit and enjoy life a book I wrote specifically for amputees to guide them to upgrading their activity, thinking about goal setting for their activity and moving on with further activity in their lives. And I'm a chief lecturer at the Lower Extremity Prosthetics course every year, which is accredited by the Australasian College of Rehabilitation Medicine since 1991. We have several OSA champions who attend the clinic who are there to help us demonstrate running techniques, exercises, to share their experiences um, with the amputee athletes. We have Nick Zanelli on the left, a trans, uh, transfemoral amputee who was a runner to the Paralympic level and is still able to run on a running prosthesis and is very good at communicating how to do this, particularly to the paediatric transfemoral amputees who may be in attendance. On the right hand side there we've got Joni who is a Paralympic snowboarder and currently at the World Championships of snowboarding and has in fact medalled there this month. We have Matt, bilateral transtibial amputee who will be on his running feet as well and can share his experiences of overcoming severe disease processes um, to enable a normal and healthy lifestyle. And on the right we have a new Paralympic or OSA champion joining us, Liam from New Zealand who has in fact just qualified for the Paralympic Games in Rio this year. So very exciting for you to come along and work with uh, someone who will be competing this year and be able to follow his story all the way through to the Paralympic Games in Rio. The Sydney Clinic will have a few differences though from the Brisbane Clinic. Because we have a change of leader, we're going to have a slightly different focus to the clinic. Um, it won't be um, presenting as much research as Bob did in Brisbane last year. We'll be doing um, a few more down to earth things and have more things for the amputees to take home with them to do. But we will also have some familiar inclusion. Some of the different things though, we will have a presentation by Brett Jones. We're going to go through with Brett what he's looking at uh, for on the track for amputees who can already run but are looking to improve their performance and perhaps move on to sport or competition. We're looking at his essentials of performance and he's going to take us through the basics of amputee running biomechanics and I think this will be very interesting both for the amputees and the health professionals in attendance because often looking above the level that you're already at can point you in the right direction to improving your own performance and moving up to that next level. We'll have a presentation by David Howells on prosthesis for running and the evolution of the sporting prosthesis. Particularly at the clinic we'll be focusing on the flex run, looking at the issues of static alignment. So if you're working with one of your athletes and uh, the prosthetists that we have coming and David in particular, you'll be looking at the height that the prosthesis should be, the angle of knee flexion required, and the amount of toe out that's required for the flex run. And then moving on to the dynamics, you'll be looking at the vertical foot placement, um, how to get equal stride length, the knee range of movement that's required, um, the flat foot transi transition, 
how to achieve a level pelvis when the athlete is running, level shoulders and then arm swing. And obviously there's things to go in there from the prosthetic point of view and the physiotherapy and amputee athlete point of view and hopefully at the clinic we'll be putting those together for you to get someone up and running successfully on their flex run. We'll be having a motivational presentation this time. I'm sure as health professionals dealing with amputees, we've all come across the situation where someone has perhaps plateaued in their performance and their motivation has really dipped and they may have even dipped into depression. And Donnie can help with that with how to re-motivate people and keep them moving along the track through their rehabilitation and through getting back into life and their leisure and recreation. He'll also be leading an amputee forum which is going to discuss all of the things that are available for amputees to tap into to help them deal with their activities of daily living and fitting back into the social side of things. And we're hoping also to have a session on navigating the NDIS for amputees and hopefully we'll have someone from the NDIS attending the clinic and delivering that session. We're also going to have a session on getting the most out of your microprocessor knee joint and that will be run by myself and one of our transfemoral champions, Nick. It's going to deal with improving weight bearing onto the prosthesis so that you actually get more benefit out of your microprocessor knee. We're going to look at how to negotiate stairs and slopes and changing direction. I'm in a very uh, fortunate situation that I've trained about 100 to 120 amputees now on their MPKs and I've had exposure to uh, a lot of different types of MPK. So I think it will be good to get everybody together and go through the techniques which are quite often extremely similar so that the amputees will be able to get the most out of those types of knee joints. There will also be an opportunity to trial a running foot at the clinic, to trial a flex run. Um, this has to be sorted out during the registration process. So when either you or your amputee athlete registers, registers, they need to indicate that they would like to try a running foot so that we can have that organised and we'll be able to fit it there on the day. Um, it's on a first in best dress basis as well, so the sooner that the amputee athlete gets their registration in, the more chance they will have of being able to trial a running foot. We'll also be having an exercise essentials for amputee athlete session. And these, are going, these sessions are going to look at the essential stretches for amputees to, to avoid uh, muscle shortening, tightening, joint contractures and a decrease in their functional capacity. We're going to look at increasing core strength and stability and stability and strength of hip and knee musculature. Basically so that people can get more bounce to the ounce out of the prosthesis that they're on and they'll be able to look at improving their um, prosthetic technology in the future because they will be able to upgrade the physical capacity. So our goals for, for training throughout the two days of the clinic are going to be looking towards improved prosthetic control for the amputee athletes. And that's going to be via a combination of improved balance on the prosthesis and improved strength and muscle recruitment um, to control the prosthesis as well. We will have the balance and strength exercise session as I uh, mentioned which will include resisted elastic bands, it will include stability function as well as strength for muscle and joints particularly the hips and the knees and the core and we will also have some walking slash running slash fast mobility drills to get people uh, more able to run on their prostheses as well. 
We'll be doing a lot of stretching on both days because stretching is very important um, not only for everyone but particularly amputee athletes and particularly in those muscle groups that are prone to shortening. We'll be looking at passive stretching, a bit of static stretching, probably not getting into PNF stretching which is uh, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretching because that requires a little bit more specialisation. But we will be looking at the major muscle groups such as the glutes, the upper limbs, the gastrox on the other leg and particularly the hip muscles on the prosthetic side. We will be including favourites within the clinic such as Bob Gailey's five steps to amputee running. And within the five steps we'll first be looking at prosthetic trust so that people will be getting balance on their prosthesis, they'll be learning to take greater impact through their prosthesis and we'll be looking at switching on their core while they're getting the weight onto that prosthesis. The second step we'll be looking at is getting a backward thrust. And the backward thrust is essential for putting more pressure through the ground so that we can actually start to instigate a flight phase off the prosthesis because the difference between walking and running is indeed that flight phase and getting rid of the double support phase. So we'll be propelling the body over the prosthetic foot, pushing backwards hardly, uh, sorry, with greater force and recruiting the gluteals and the hamstrings for the transtibial amputees. Number three we'll be looking at the sound limb stride length. And if you've had a great deal of experience dealing with amputees, you'll often note that even in walking, the sound limb stride length is decreased because they're not recruiting the glutes and the push-off muscles on the prosthetic side. So step three of the running is to increase that stride length and getting more push. And once they start to do this, you'll find that their actual walking speed will increase as well as getting a flight phase into the running. You will find that some amputee athletes attending the clinic are not particularly interested in running. But a lot of these techniques will actually help them with just moving quickly and walking more efficiently. So it's going to be of great benefit for them to take part in this session of the clinic as well. Step four is looking at stride symmetry, which is getting both step lengths equal. And finally looking at arm swing and upper body rotation. And we'll be doing some exercises and drills to get the arms and upper body rotating in opposition to the pelvis so that we can get more power translating through the ground and greater propulsion forward for the amputee athlete. And so they'll be getting an increase in their speed and greater lift off the ground and more effective running or walking quickly technique. Some favourites will be returning including lunch but not only the nice healthy food that we have on offer but we will be sharing the champion stories during lunch with I think, which I think a lot of people uh, attending the clinic get a great deal out of seeing how other people have dealt with their uh, reason that caused their amputation and got on with their lives. Um, sometimes they will talk about developing sexuality if they've had their amputation as a young person and addressing those sorts of issues. Um, they'll be looking at talking about things like uh, getting an occupation, getting back into sport, um, dealing with their amputation and how they fit back in with their family and their friends and so on. And these are the things that amputees often don't have access to when they're going through rehabilitation. But in these sorts of situations, people will be able to get together and talk about them and uh, have a great social benefit from. The multi-directional agility for sport session will be back again in the Sydney Clinic. And this will be negotiating obstacles, different pathways and getting ready to 
the sport and concentrating on more than one thing. So not just the feet and the legs, but doing things with the arms and realising that you are capable of doing those sorts of things, um, with speed, with ball bouncing, all sorts of things like that. And the all-in basketball will be that, which is a great favourite. And you can see that everybody who wants to participate can and plays together. And we've got little Mr Four Years Old there with absolutely no fear taking on one of our tallest amputee athletes as well. And um, a great time is had by all. We've also got the return of the relay um, in which we have competing teams and the amputees run or move quickly and negotiate obstacles in different ways to get through the relay course. And on the left hand side you'll see a lady who's actually a quadruple amputee competing in the relay. And so we've got everybody there. Uh, it's, a, it's a great um, event uh, with a great air and everybody has a good time competing in that. So I'm hoping to see you all in Sydney. For more information about the clinic and registrations, please go to the OFFA website www.ossa.com.au slash Ossa Mobility Clinics.